Good morning, everyone. I have a topic today that has come to me and it resonated with me so much that I put it down on paper. And I wanted to share it with you and hopefully it will resonate with you too. Gary did such a wonderful spiritual reading and really hit all the, the high points of my talk, but I really enjoyed his uh, spiritual reading. The, uh, the subject is imagery and, and how it plays a part in creating our lives. For years I believed I had had no imagination. I really do, but I just had no realization of it. And this is, has to do with just the, the ignorance of some of my you know, spiritual growth. That's, that's the reason we come to church and we read books and we uh, get wisdom and, and we grow. But we use our imagination all the time our perceptions and the way we see each other and the world are formed from our imagination. The images we have are all created from our experiences and teachings. The image that I have of myself is molded and shaped by my life experiences. The power of imagination is used in our mind for coping, psychological healing. It also expressed the manifestation of our mind. All true healing takes place in the mind. When we heal our minds, we can heal the body and our world. And when our minds are healed, our vision of the way we see our world is corrected. We no longer see the darkness or error in anything. We only see love and perfection in everything and everyone. When I first had a realization that we were responsible for our thoughts and we could change our world by changing our thinking and changing our thoughts. Of course, that was a revelation for me like it was for a lot of people and it actually not only puts the responsibility of my life on me, but it also gives me a lot of hope. I don't have to rely on outside things to, to take care of me spiritually. A Course in Miracles describes this world as being an illusion and nothing is real. Well, the way I interpret that is we perceive our human condition to be who we truly are and what we see. Everything around us is physically real, but not who we truly are. The illusion is that we associate and define ourselves by class, by property, stature in the community, intellect, and our surroundings. We become diminished by the value we give these false idols. The illusion is corrected when we forgive ourselves of falling short of our authentic expectations. Forgiveness is necessary for our human condition, not for God's love. Forgiveness of others, which is truly forgiveness of ourselves, is the path to healing of the mind. 
there is truly nothing to forgive. But as human beings feeling separated from our source, we have a need to feel worthy of God's love. We forgive to give ourselves permission to connect with God, our divinity within. This is not necessary to receive God's love. For God's love is absolute and always present. God does not regulate love. Love is not arbitrary. We as human beings qualify and quantify God's love. God doesn't give love. God is love. Man's love is conditional and God's love is unconditional. We have social, physical, and mental conditions on love. Expressing from our human condition manifests limitations, selfishness, sorry, water. Man's love is conditional and God's love is unconditional. We have social, physical, and mental conditions on love. Expressing from our human condition manifest limitations. Selfishness, self-righteous judgment, and so on. All in our thinking. So that little small voice inside us tells us we are wrong. And then we tell ourselves we need to forgive. But that's not the truth. That's our ego's interpretation to keep us unworthy of God's love. The truth is our image of ourselves is in error. God is telling us we are love and this is not in alignment with God's love. So, once we have this realization our vision has been corrected and so we are healed. We do not need to be forgiven by God, but by ourselves. When we are pure in heart, we have our greatest awareness of who we truly are. We truly feel the presence of God. The presence of God not only resides in you, but you are the presence of God, always. We are always expressing, manifesting, and creating our experience, even when, in our eyes, we haven't reached that perfection we have imaged in our minds. We are here in this plane of existence to experience, create, manifest and express and become awakened to our thought, authentic true selves. The only perfection we are expected to achieve is our ability to create with absolute coherence to what we are manifesting. The perfection is not of the world but creating in the world. Perfection is in the creating itself, intentionally or unconsciously. And everything is perfect because it's from our divinity. The imperfection comes from how we see and gauge things. This is the image of our world. This is where we get good and bad out analogies from. These are not of God, but of our human experience. This is not to say God is not guiding us and our decisions we make are always perfect. But the process is perfect. And we learn from it. We must learn to let judgment go of others and ourselves. To be able to allow our transformation to deliver us to our next 
greatest destination in our human search for our divine selves. We have throughout the centuries acquired and created tools and techniques to help transform our human condition to our authentic selves. Charles Fillmore in his book, The Twelve Powers, writes, we have within us bound in a cage of the subconscious all the propensities and the savagery of animals. In the transformation, these are brought forth and a great reconciliation takes place. We find that there is really nothing unclean except to human consciousness. This is backed up by a lot, a lot of New Thought students emphatically declare, God is good always. Everything is divine in divine order. There is no imperfection. We are more than what we see. We form images in our mind from our human experiences and they in turn attract to us more of what we are seeing. Charles Fillmore also writes, the mind formulates into thought images of every idea that arises in it and then tries to express it in language which is nearly always inadequate. Our imagination is one of our most powerful faculties. It helps us to point, oh, I'm sorry, it helps us to paint a portrait of our divinity within. How we see ourselves is very important to our conscious connection with the divine. Are we seeing perfection or error? To heal ourselves, we must see perfection. Our nature is always striving for this image. We have the ability through our imagination to express this truth. We are our authentic selves expressing our full potential in every moment we breathe this human experience. Even when we are frustrated and think we are not living up to our full potential, but this is perfection also. We are being guided to God's perfect love. Everything ultimately leads us to God's love. They are, it is there for us just to, just to open our eyes and see. The images we have in our mind is our reality. We have the ability through our faculty of imagination to change these images if we so desire. So I leave you with this. How do you see the image of yourself and your world? A perfect expression of God or a helpless victim to the world? or somewhere in between. How do you see things? You get to choose. It's your image. Be grateful for what you have.